My name is Damon Williams. I'm the author of Strategic Diversity Leadership and the Chief Diversity Officer. And I want to talk about the process of creating a departmental diversity plan. One of the things that we know to be so important in creating that plan is first it has to begin with an intentionality that the plan is being designed to achieve meaningful results. So many plans spend so much time in the analysis, so much time in the rationale, so much time in the articulation of definitions, so much time in the articulation of frameworks that they don't build into the plan some of the key dynamics that have to be there in order for the plan to be successful. And I want to talk about those things today. One, you need a very clear framework of action. So what are the various dimensions that you're going to build your plan out around? Is there going to be an aspect of it that talks about student outreach and recruitment? Is there going to be a part of it that talks about faculty development? Is there going to be a part of it that talks about creating a campus climate of inclusion? Is there going to be a part of it that talks about how we infuse diversity and diverse ideas into research and scholarship? But creating a clear framework of action is essential. Then, inside that framework, it's also important to think about what is the goal? What is the quantitative goal that you would like to accomplish inside of that framework? And then, what are some of the other indicators that you need to be tracking and measuring to be able to judge success over time? For example, ultimately, you may put in place a departmental plan that is designed to increase the number of women on your faculty or the number of underrepresented minorities on your faculty. That may be the ultimate outcome measure that you're looking to track. But the question becomes, what are some of the lead indicators that you need to also be tracking to ensure that you are moving in that direction? So, for example, how many uh, points of contact did you have with diverse individuals in the recruitment process? How many conferences did you go to? How many applicants did you get? How many outreach phone calls did you get? Uh, tracking and monitoring these things as a part of a more rigorous search process ultimately become a part of ensuring and helping yourself to get to that ultimate outcome of having a more diverse uh, a group of candidates that are interviewing and ultimately that are hiring. To stay with that idea, it's not only having a framework, not only having the indicators, but also thinking through what are the key tactics that you need to put in place to move an agenda forward. Let's stay with this idea of faculty diversification. One of the first points that I think is so important as you think about faculty diversification is how do you develop a faculty diversity rationale statement? At the University of Wisconsin-Madison, one of the things we did, myself and the Vice Provost for Faculty Affairs, is we partnered and developed a committee to establish a faculty diversity rationale statement. In that statement, we defined what we meant by diversity. In this instance, we talked about faculty diversity. We were talking about individuals who were diverse in terms of underrepresented minority backgrounds. We were talking about individuals who were diverse in terms of gender. Uh, and not only women who were underrepresented in certain fields of study like STEM or business and other areas, but also in some instances we were defining gender diversity as male meaning the number of men that were present in the faculty in the nursing department, where they were very underrepresented. But beyond those social characteristics of diversity, we also talked about diversity of research agenda. And in this instance, we really tailored that definition to talk about placing a premium on those individuals who brought a diversity-themed scholarly agenda to the department because we believe that that was a part of strengthening our competitive advantage. For example, someone who maybe is interested in culturally relevant computing, someone who is interested in uh, research that deals with gendered issues in terms of uh, collision or in terms of various health-related matters. But how do we build out uh, diversity as a space for inquiry and a space for research and scholarship that we prioritize. And so in building that rationale statement, we define diversity in that way. It wasn't just underrepresented minorities, it wasn't just gender, but it was also diversity of thought as it related to their research agenda. Because someone may come to the table who's interested in a particular area who may be a part of the majority, but their research agenda is going to add to our ability to understand uh, diversity related uh, areas and create a more inclusive and broad based strategy for the department overall. So beyond the framework, beyond the indicators, beyond the tactic, it's how do we bring these things to life. One, I have found that 
institutions that are committed always have to make an investment of capital. That means making a financial investment into your diversity effort. I can't tell you what that financial commitment should be. It's something that has to be determined locally based upon your priorities and the resources at hand. But what I do know is that commitment without currency is counterfeit. And we have to put investments into our efforts if we're going to lead uh, to diversity impact and new outcomes over time. So one is making financial investments. A second major aspect uh, requires the establishment of an accountability framework. How are we going to create a cadence of accountability for what we do? One way to create that cadence of accountability is uh, ensuring that every search committee to stay with that faculty diversity uh, 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 example to ensure that every search committee all goes through a training on how to cast a broad net, how to run an inclusive search, how to ensure that you are not microaggressing against candidates during the search process and that you are inviting them into an inclusive process. In addition to that, it might also entail the development of resources that would allow for you to bring in additional candidates, maybe expanding beyond three candidates to four, or maybe knowing that hey, we got a retirement coming up in two years. How can we have some resources that will allow some early pre-recruitment to happen to maybe bring in a candidate of a diverse background a year early, two years early, and cultivating them in the process uh, by allowing uh, the institution to showcase itself to them and allowing for them to share their research agenda to the campus, maybe making a pre-recruitment happen even before the time span when you're really hiring. Another major tactic that we find, found to be very important is how do you develop postdocing? Postdocing opportunities that are financed, yes, but more than that, they're pathway to a tenure track opportunity. I know that every faculty department, every institutional department is different. At the same time, too, this is one of the tried and true techniques to find strong candidates to help them understand how to become a part of the department and ultimately it's a pathway to bring them into a tenure track role and position. Maybe a, a disruptor from how you normally do things, but it's important to consider those ideas moving forward. So again, having a framework, having indicators, having tactics that work and that are evidence-based, making financial investments, also building in accountability techniques, all are important action steps to move forward in your agenda. Another idea that I find to be so important is how do you have financial resources that are available as an incentive, right? So we talk about these financial dollars as an incentive. So one is to have those dollars that are available to bring in, again, that additional candidate. Others is to maybe have financial dollars that incent members of the committee to go out to a conference. Uh, others may be to purchase different lists or different databases. These resources are key to empowering departments and empowering uh, your committees to be able to make the difference and to truly cast a broad net and maximize the likelihood of attracting a diverse candidate pool and ultimately making a diverse hire. The last example I'd like to give is target of opportunity hiring efforts. This is searching for faculty candidates without a license, right? So before there's a search, if you see a diverse candidate who brings the scholarly chops that you're looking for, they bring the type of background that you think would be a great fit to the department, how can you have resources that are in place to make that hire happen now before the search occurs? Those are target of opportunity programs. We have found them to be incredibly successful. In the same instance too, the more you have that faculty rationale in the beginning, the more you risk mitigate the process, meaning that that faculty rationale becomes a part of the academic DNA of the department, of the school, of the institution. And the more you do that, the more you are creating that educational benefit statement of why diversity really matters that ultimately you want to bring to life when you bring that new faculty in and that may happen outside of a search in a target of opportunity area. In my book, Strategic Diversity Leadership and the Chief Diversity Officer, we talk about all these examples, all these techniques at a great level of depth. Thank you.